South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. And I'm Jeannie D. Today, we are going to have such an inspiring show because one thing that I love in the world more than shoes is a gorgeous handbag. And we've got one of the most amazing local designers, ATG Akasi, in the loft, who literally, I mean, when we saw her earlier, she is like, she is the icon of style in South Africa is what like Karl Lagerfeld is in Milan. No, she's it's yeah, literally she's so stylish, and she just so confident, so and well. wait until you see these handbags. I mean, as if I need another handbag in my life, but I want all of these. That's kind of <laughs> and also joining us is Instagram goddess and stylist Yoli Swam Kono, right? Not <laughs> okay. And we'll be chatting to her about what she's been up to and why she's so amazing. And then, of course, Danilo's in the kitchen. He's joining us as well today. Indeed, it's going to be such an epic show. Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. So today, I feel like we should be on an aeroplane fright flight. There should be air hostesses running down the aisles because it's chicken or fish today on the show and Clem is going to be making us both of those recipes exactly. which is exciting. Chicken and fish. Chicken and fish. So yes. let's start with our fish recipe. What are you making? So for the fish recipe, we're going to go very Spanish and do a paella. 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 Not paella, paella. paella. Not, a paella. Not, a, not a paella. Can no. I just say, I was recently paella. in Portugal, people were so upset when you said the word paella because obviously the Spanish and the Portuguese are like just next to but they were like, they fight. So if I mentioned paella, like, we don't make paella here. <laughs> they were very angry about it. So we're going to make a version of a paella. Exactly, a real simple one. And just using ingredients that you'll have at home. Nothing awesome. too exotic. It's great, it's like a peasant food. People, it originated from peasant exactly, food. Exactly, it was. Yeah. And then we're going over to Mexico. Mexico! So we're making burritos. All around the world, people want to eat delicious food. You need a woman when you do stuff like that. Yeah, okay. just to like get out of the show. Yeah. Let me shine. <laughs> cool, so what are we making with our chicken today? So we're using rotisserie chicken as the hero ingredient. Lovely. Something so iconic. Everybody loves rotisserie chicken. Yes. We're using it to make amazing burritos. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. So if you guys obviously want to get all the ingredients and a link to the recipe, the key word that you need to use today to keep your phones ready is chicken. And that number is 33650 the cost of one rand fifty. What I will tell you is, when I was young, all right, chicken, this rotisserie chicken from Woolies, was like the hero ingredient every single Sunday. It was like the family would get around, obviously my mom would go buy the chicken, bring it back home, would bring a whole bunch of rocket, a whole bunch of mayo, delicious breads and other sides, and this would become like our go-to thing on a Sunday Absolutely. afternoon. I think a lot of people have stories about yeah. how amazing this rotisserie chicken is and how they've used it. So well, well done for saying that because you could win. You could really, really win. If you guys want to get involved in winning a really cool Weber Bry with us on Afternoon Express today, we're asking you how you can be creative with your rotisserie chicken at home and tell us by going onto our Facebook page as a Woolies post, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Go and comment on it because you'll also maybe be reading some of those comments live on air. Tell us how you would use your rotisserie chicken as a hero ingredient in a dish that you could make that's absolutely creative. All right? The prizes are big. And it's really, really it's cool prizes, all right? So just one more reminder for those of you who do want to get the ingredients and the recipe. It's chicken to 33650. That SMS will cost you 150, and your free SMSs do not apply. All that cooking and more later, right here on Afternoon Express. Let's kick off the show on the couch. <laughs> now, Yolis was one of those women who cannot be summed up in one sentence. She is not only successful, She's not only a successful plus-size model, but she's also a personal stylist, and she's built up her brand on social media with more than 30,000 followers on Instagram. But at the tender age of 24, this is just the beginning. Welcome to The Loft, Yolisa. Thank you guys for having me. We're so happy to have you here. You're amazing. Thank you, Thank you guys. You guys are amazing, <laughs> too. So research tells us that you come from a very influential family when it comes to style and just African identity as a whole. They've called them the Kardashians of Africa. <laughs> Tell us about this. Um, yes, you know, sometimes my, my, they do call my family that, like the Kardashians of South Africa. We obviously are, we are our own people, um, but it's, I mean, it's nice to be compared to the most <laughs> fabulous family in the world. What makes you guys who you are, do you think? Um, I think we just really love fashion with our soul. Like, oh. it's, it's not like, it's not like an easy thing for us. It's very, it's intense. And it's, it's like that all across the board in my house, from my mom to my younger sister to my older sister to me. So it's really a passion that is like through all of us. Yeah. So I love how you've become South Africa's, um, I think, youngest plus size model and how yeah. you've embraced your body. But I read that you, you said somewhere that you didn't even notice that your body was a plus yeah. size or normal size or any other different size because it was never a conversation. And when I read yeah. that, it struck a chord with me because, like in my family, you can't body shame anybody. Yeah. So that a young girl must be raised without even knowing what 
It is. It must even be part of your yeah. language to 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 consider any other body yeah. than than what's yours. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. I only realized stuff like that when I got older. When yeah. I was younger, I think my mom we are, we love fashion so much that she would just dress me up and I would love it and it was a thing that we did together. So because I was already confident in the way that I looked, because that's what clothes do for you. Yeah. Um, I was already just happy well, with style. myself. That's what style does style. for you, not clothes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and fashion just has <laughs> always had... No, yeah, yeah, fashion has always just had that effect on me. So I've never really looked down on myself. Like, Good for you. Know, I just... Yeah. It's only uh, as I got older, you know, the world starts making you, they make you realize certain things. And I'm like, well, that's not really a thing for me. No, but how did you react to that? Because I know you were, you were bullied a bit on, on Twitter and it wasn't even for it wasn't body even shaming. For body it was shaming. for how you feel about fashion, which was ridiculous. But I mean, how do you take it when people, um, all of a sudden you are out there and, yeah. pe and people, you know, the do thing, make you a bit of a dark Unfortunately, board. the thing with Twitter is... I'm very opinionated. I think opinionated people should stay away from Twitter because they will come for you and it's fine. And then I just decided, you know, well, it's just also, better not for me not to have Twitter. Yeah, it's yeah. just peace of yeah. mind. Actually, my life is way better without that. You know what? It's not even everyone on Twitter. I, I, I mean, I essentially have a problem with woke Twitter. I think oh. that they've become the new segregation. They've started this segregative movement where yeah. they decide who speaks and when and about what. Yeah, and that's gotten Twitter's problematic. In sections. There's work Twitter, there's black Twitter, there's gay Twitter. Um, but I mean, I think people should just be themselves and if they feel like that's a platform they want to use to yeah. say whatever, then go for it. That I was the point of Twitter, for everybody yeah. to have their own opinion yeah. without people bullying. Getting yeah. And, yeah. And no stuff. trolls so, allowed. So <laughs> how were you able to turn something that you love so much, like fashion, into a lucrative career? Oh, so um, a couple of years ago, maybe like three years ago, I used to work at this boutique in Bryanston and I really loved working there. It was like such an escape for me because I was still a fashion student at that time. So I got to, um, like the customers that would come there are generally the same type of woman and they come there, they're like religious customers. So obviously that's where I started acquiring a client base because they'll come in the store and they'll be like, you know, I'd style them in the store and they'd be like, no, can we actually just do this at home? Like, come Amazing. to my place. Come Let's see what just, else I have. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, so that's how it started. And then you build your client base slowly, but yeah. surely. And then a friend tells a friend, a friend tells a friend. Then next thing you have like 15 million women to deal with. Brilliant. So that's wow. pretty much where it started. Mm. And then after I got Instagram, then obviously it blew up. Okay, let's discuss your Instagram page. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, I th Instagram is a, it's a very special place. It's done a lot of good things for me. Yeah. So, and like Twitter, Instagram is like a... Wow. Yeah. Now, I oh. always, whenever I see all of these amazing shots, I think... Who takes Who's these photographs taking these photos? for you? My when sister, are you taking I mean, why them? Do not, What's going on? Yeah. Is this yeah. your life? Why don't I have <laughs> friends who take these beautiful aesthetic photos of me that look like I'm not looking? We're like actually just all stuff. just lying to you guys. It's actually such a panic when we have to take these pictures, like me and my friends or whatever. But it's fun, you know. It's just yeah. it is a fun, thing yeah. that we do, like creating and curating your page. It's just, it's something that we all just enjoy. So, yeah. It's, it's, I really, really enjoy that app. Yeah, yeah. And the people are so, like, I've, they have never had not one bad thing said to me. People are so supportive and so loving. I will have a crap day and I post a selfie and so many people are saying the nicest thing and my whole day has changed because of that, just that genuine love all the time and yeah. I, I really really appreciate that yeah, yeah. you are amazing and yes. you are so yes. ridiculously stylish you, you know what you are you. you're just cool she's just thank cool. you <laughs> you're also just lovely to be around yeah oh, thanks yeah. Exactly. Yeah. amazing amazing energy thank so you. currently on our Facebook page we are running a competition where you can win a personal shopping experience with your Lisa oh. to the value of 5,000 Rand I'm I mean I want to win this. Yeah, I wanna win. all you have to do <laughs> is head to it. Facebook find the post and nominate who you think is the most uh, 
or who's the person who most needs a styling experience and why. The competition is only open until um, the show today, so hurry up and nominate. It's somebody who needs the style advice. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Somebody who unfortunately can't be nominated, standing by, Danilo. Hey, you might need it for a girlfriend or somebody else, like a sister, why not? You can nominate anybody, right? Isn't that the point of beautiful fashion? All right, ladies and gents, after the break, all right, on Afternoon Express, we're going to be making some delicious chicken burritos to spice up your Thursday afternoon, plus loads of chances to win, so you do not touch that remote. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we're only one day away from the weekend. Keep clawing on to that special day. And I know that this weekend always comes with a lot of fun and family times you guys need to create together. And one of the things that my family loved to do on a Sunday afternoon while I was still at home, gosh, how many years ago was that? Uh, was to make this rotisserie chicken, to bring it home from something like a Willy's and really just enjoy that experience together because everyone likes different parts of the chicken. You get to experience different styles of it. Clem today has decided to show us a new way of using that rotisserie chicken to create something delicious. So we're going to be mm -hmm. creating a delicious spicy burrito Exactly. using it. Right, so we're starting in Mexico. So we're going to make a bit of a, a black bean puree. Cool. It's not the traditional black beans that they use in Mexico, but we've got something quite similar, kidney beans. Okay, cool, which are like a brown bean, like a red bean. It's a red bean. Mm. I think it's red. Cool. It's brown. What color is the dress? Oh, yeah, exactly. Remember that dress, that golden, golden blue and black dress? That thing used to freak me out. Cool. Okay, so you throw in a bowl. Real simple. And then I got some... You can use cream cheese, you can use sour cream, uh -huh. you can use... A very healthy alternative is something like a yogurt, like a really thick double thick You can yogurt. use yogurt. Greek yogurt. Absolutely. What this is going to do is basically going to be the agent that kind of helps all the other flavors come together. Great. So I like that you said yogurt because that's actually a good, good uh, substitute to this. I told you, I'm not a, I'm not a like some, some just pretty face in the kitchen. I love trying out new things. Yeah, I'm, okay, pretty, and I'm happy when you give your two cents. Mm. It's actually pretty cool. Cool. Charles next next time will be five, okay, cool. <laughs> Charles go in, a lot of coriander, I love coriander. Mm -hmm. Some people find it offensive. Oh wait, that's you. No, I don't find it offensive. It's a flavor that you really got to get used to because it brings so much freshness to dishes if it's incorporated <laughs> correctly. I think that's one of the you. biggest things, yeah. Just too fresh for you. <laughs> and then real simple, just give it a nice blitz. Oh wow, simple like that. It's real easy. So this is great, actually, as a base on a salad. Oh, yummy. Instead of making hummus, try making mm. this. Exactly, because I think a lot of people, when they think of burritos or wraps, etc., always try and use the generics, tahinis, uh, what's in mojitos? You don't use that on a burrito. No. Well, you could drink it with your burrito, yeah. but not on your burrito. <laughs> uh, and you also have your things like hummus and things, which is nice to have an, a nice alternative, which has got that, like, tartiness in it, but also all those nice, like, binding agents. And robust flavors. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Now it's time to reveal... Reveal the chicken. So... There's a rule when it comes to carving chicken, uh -huh. but I'm not going to do that today. I'm actually going to try to do that next week. Okay, good, because I honestly have got no idea. Everyone says to me, like, well, who wants to carve the chicken? And always the eyes turn to the man in the room, and I always say to the guys, please, just don't let me do it because I'm the most disorganized human being ever. It'll come out looking... Like... Hacked. <laughs> like that poor chicken really had, like, a tough life. It's really Shame, what it's man. Like. Yeah. No, but these chickens are absolutely... Do you know they butter basted first of all? Oh, they're so perfectly okay. cooked as well. So juicy. Mm. So I remember um, going on rugby days. Mm -hmm. We would buy uh, like rotisserie chickens. And just and obviously annihilate we were, them. We were big boys, No, I'm trying to just rip rugby. it off and like, take that leg and eat it there. And we would just devour the chicken. Like, we would buy rolls, but I mean, forget the rolls. Yeah. We just pack into the chicken. <laughs> Such fond memories of this. I know. Uh, we were honestly exactly the same. Exactly the same as my family. My brother was literally, we called him the human vacuum cleaner. Like, that man could just... <laughs> You would breathe the chicken in and would just enter, <laughs> enter into the system. All right, so that's done. So we've got our chicken carved up beautifully. Dan, can you pop one of those wraps? Sure. I'm using the Willie's multi seed wraps because they got the, like the nuttiness and they got some extra flavor in them. You Great. can use the plain wraps, absolutely. Go crazy. Also, I think uh, Willie's do have a, a gluten free option for those who are looking for I mean, there's not necessarily the wraps themselves and they use a thicker, thicker sort of set. But I mean, basically, the idea is find an agent that you can put your ingredients in. Yeah. Uh, and burritos naturally are with a nice uh, wrap. They've got those cauliflower wraps, which yes. are insanely good besides really? being um, carb clever. I didn't know. Yeah. So I'm just chopping up some spring onions quickly. I've toasted my wrap really lightly. And it's not just to get it toasted, it actually just helps it become more pliable. Yes. You don't want to actually. Do it when it's not toasted because it'll just break. Yes, yeah, so it'll get crunchy and break. Honestly, they do tear. And the worst thing about a burrito that's got lots of sauce and lots of flavors inside of it is exactly when that stuff just starts to leak out the side and you end up with this mush in your hands. Yes, I've done it. But you have to like try and use your hands the whole time. It's no, not No, I not love glamorous. when burritos are super messy and sloppy. Really? That's just me. Oh, I suppose. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm a so neat freak. My like pace that. goes down. Some cool. of the remember ribbon carrots, sorry. Some 
cucumber, some of the chicken, some extra coriander. Delicious, all for freshness. All for yummy, freshness. yummy. And then some more spring onions, and we're just gonna roll. Delicious. Real tight. Mm. You're almost going to wrap it. You uh, do. Cool, so just like that, you've I'm got a delicious chicken burrito. You can carry on making all of those because I want one per person. That's going to be dinner tonight, that is for sure. If you guys want to get a list of all the ingredients as well as a link to the recipe, you can SMS the keyword chicken to 33650. It will cost you 150 and those free SMSs do not apply. And if you miss any of the steps and want to know how to make it in case you're getting sucked into our conversation, here's a quick recap. Yummy. So speaking of delicious Mexican treats, make sure you catch Top Billing this evening at 8 p.m. On, on SABC3 as Lorna and Samizi attend a gala event where top SA chef Luke Dale Roberts and Mexican chef Jorge Vallejo, who both have establishments that have finished in the top 30 in the world's top 50 restaurants and top best restaurants in the world, join forces to create a 16-course masterpiece. Even the Mexican ambassador was there to enjoy the festivities. It surely is not to be missed. So we're browsing through all the social media sites so far. I'm sorry it's really small on your screen. I'm trying to see if I can kind of get this to go and zoom in a bit for you. But thanks to everybody who's been sharing all their comments and thoughts and opinions, entering all of our competitions online. We love hearing from you. Um, so Paul Vubu says that she was very excited to hear the story that we had today on our show. Um, Let's read one of the ones from here. So, Nicole Gaynor says, I nominate myself uh, as a plus size girl. It's personal and seeing that I'm rediscovering myself it would give me the edge and back in life. The past few years have been hard on me going through emotional health and almost giving up on myself. Now I'm in an almost healthy state and want to look after myself. So thanks to all those comments. If you want to read through them and nominate somebody to go and get that personal styling trip, you can go and find the details on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now this is the insert I've been waiting my whole life for. ATG Ikasi handbags and clothing based in Cape Town's trendy Long Street recently exhibited at the Design in Daba, where they managed to secure an international client for their bespoke, hand-stitched, incredible handbags, shoes and clothing made from rich and colorful African prints sourced from Ghana and South Africa. And we're joined today by the co-owner, Tuleka Duze. Welcome. Thank I mean, how me. talented are you, you and how gorgeous is this? Thank you so much, Thank guys. you so much for coming so, on the show. How did your business begin? How did this, you come up with this idea? It all started in Gugletu in a one-bedroom with my business partner. His name is Abbas Ma'azu. He was busy doing clothes, um, alterations, and making designs for other people. Then I said to him one day, you know what, how about we do something different? Yeah. Because everyone is doing clothing these days. Yeah. Let's just try handbags. But now we didn't know where to start. And then we sent him to, uh, to Ghana, where he went to do the course for like two months. And then he came back. That's when he shared the skills with us and other three employees that we have today. Incredible. Wow. And then you went from being a, a township business and you got offered the opportunity to go and study a business course. Oh, yes. What was the business course that you did? And, and Actually, what, what did you I'm do for your business? I'm still busy studying at really? the course. It's a small business academy program. Yeah. It's at the University of Stellenbosch Business School. Incredible. Wow. That has helped me a lot because now with the business, as much as we knew what we wanted, but we did not have any business background. Yeah. So now uh, I've learned a lot and I'm implying that into my business, Incredible. which is uh, good for us and for our growth as well. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And what are some of the challenges you encountered when you were beginning? 
Uh, the fact that we had this beautiful product in front of us that we, that we see right now, yeah. but now we didn't know how to take it out to the market, who yeah. was our, our clientele, other than the people in the township. At least now things are different because we are in town, where everybody will see our product, and there's lots of tourists, like, the, I don't know, more than 50 buses every single day really? that stops by, and they go into our shop. That's amazing. amazing. That has made, uh, it has made a huge difference. Now, wow. you recently showcased at the Design in Daba, yes. and you secured an international client. Do that. Well Congratulations. Big ups to us. Yes. Who was the client and what does this mean for your business? Because I think this is going to do so well overseas. Our client, they are based in Spain, in Madrid. They yeah. own a shop called Ats and Ax. Yeah. Uh, the name of the guy is Rafael uh, Jose. Huge. Yeah, and is he taking a lot of numbers? He, he is. <laughs> and we're expanding. He'll be taking more stuff other than the, the handbags. Really? We'll be venturing into something else. Because you do clothing as well. What you're wearing now is yes, yours we do. as well. This is mine. This, it has to match. Stunning. Wow. I love that you just live and breathe your brand. How important is that when you're running your own business? It is very important. You need to be uh, classified and identified with your own brand, which is what I do every day. Yeah. When I joke, I, I, I always say, if I, if I were to breathe African print, that would be me. Yes, oh, wow. but you live it. You, you are magnificent. Okay, let's see what you've got here. Because, and people are people able to buy online? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But they've got to come to Cape Town. Yeah, Good excuse a for our little holiday. Two will be there. Okay, really. Okay. Yeah. Now let's see what you've got because looking at this, it's all so well made. This is amazing quality. How much would something like this sell for? This would go for 450 rands. Really? Yes. That is. A, you, might, you might want to put I up your prices when you're selling to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gorgeous and well made. And you know, made. everything is made from scratch. Yeah. That's how we make our bags yeah. and handmade. Amazing. Oh yes. Now, you also want to start a fashion school one day. Tell us about that. Um, that is something we're busy discussing uh, with my business partner. Yeah. We would like to take this, this, the, the kids or the ones that just, just finished your grade 12, yeah. uh, let them learn the skill. By doing so, Either they get a, if, even if they don't get a job, at least they'll be able to do something with their hands. Exactly. They'll be able to teach uh, other people yeah. uh, with the skill that they'll be having. Or, you know, you, sometimes you study, you have your degree, but then you're sitting at home exactly. not knowing what to do. At yeah. least if you learn something with your hands, then you can also pass on. And that will mean a lot to us, the fact that we will be employing more people and then trying to take them away from streets because these kids, they can get into... Uh, exactly. Into, in, into and it happens a lot. But what was your backstory? So mm -hmm. what were you busy doing before you got into this? Like, did you study fashion or did you study business? Like, where were you before this came into your before life? Before this, somebody stole my line over there saying chicken or beef. That used to be me. Really? I was a flight were... attendant. Really? Wow. Working for SAA. Yeah, and then you just decided no more, I need to be my own boss. Yes, I've been doing that for quite a while and um, knowing at the back of my mind that that was not my passion. But yeah. you know when you have money every day, <laughs> you know, you don't have to wait for month end. And you're comfortable. Yes. Tomorrow you sleep in New York, week after you're in Germany, that was the lifestyle. Yeah. But then reality, because this is a mother of two. Okay. And I have those two kids that I have to look exactly. after. Then I must take care of them. I cannot be away and raise For them. For such long long periods of time. You are magnificent and you've yeah. done such yeah. an incredible job. Thank you so much for coming. So and I really wish you the passion, best. Uh, I had to do something yes. about yes. it. Yes. And I wish you loads day. of sales and huge international success. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Very for being on the show. <laughs> Thank now, you so much. Tulega is a true example of success by working hard and taking advantage of opportunities that present themselves. And speaking of opportunities, a few months ago, Vodacom began the Vodacom Next Level journey, where thousands of children around South Africa entered to be part of the one-week soccer boot camp in Pretoria where they'd be trained by South African soccer legends. We got an exclusive interview with DJ Ludwig who tells us more about the next level journey. The Vodacom Next Level Soccer campaign came about because we understand how big soccer is in the country and we're pretty invested in soccer ourselves as you probably already know. We also understand that uh, the future soccer stars of South Africa haven't yet been discovered. And so through the strength of our network and the Next Level platform, it was the perfect opportunity for us to give kids of South Africa the chance to display their skills, to be discovered, and hopefully realize their dreams. 
The selection of the top 100 was a really tough two-day process. We basically sat in the boardroom with our panel of judges. It was made up of the soccer legends who've been part of the campaign all along. With a set list of criteria, the judges had to go through the top 100 videos with the most votes first. Uh, and make their selections. And I can tell you that there were some really heated debates. It was really tough, but yeah, we're very happy with what we have. The top 100 stars who are joining this week are going to have the time of their lives. The first three days are really hard training and shadow testing, which is really psychometric testing for the kids. We want to test endurance as well as skill. Um, the, on the fourth day, we unfortunately have to say goodbye to 64 of those kids, as only 32 can then move on to the exhibition match so that we can award our top 16 winners. The winning team from our exhibition match, which is really the top 16 kids, all get a full scholarship to the Tux Sports High School, and the runners-up, the other 16 kids, all get an educational policy to the value of 50,000 Rand. Uh, we're really excited about that because we believe it will give them a really good platform to take their soccer skills and also their education to the next level. So now the Vodacom Next Level Soccer Boot Camp is taking place at the University of Pretoria High Performance Centre and the two final teams will take each other on in the exhibition match this Sunday, the 2nd of October. The winners of the match walk away with a full scholarship to Tick Sports High School. We wish all the teams everything of the best. Don't forget, if you are under the age of 25 and a Vodacom prepaid subscriber, to register for Next Level, simply dial star triple one star one two eight hash. There are so many amazing bundles up for grabs. After the break, it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. South Africa's favorite tea is expertly blended to ensure that it remains of the highest quality. It's this commitment to excellence in making the perfect cup of tea that delivers its uniquely superior taste. Five Roses salutes South African women who too are committed to excellence. So today we'll be chatting to banking entrepreneur Ntabeleng Lekotsi, founder and managing director of the Young Women in Business Network, which is making serious waves in the financial sector. She's joining us for a cup of new Five Roses strawberry and blackcurrant flavored tea. This deliciously sweet yet tangy black tea is one of three new flavor combinations from Five Roses. Try passion fruit and cranberry or apple, vanilla and cinnamon. There's a flavor for every moment. So don't go away. We'll be back after the break with Ntabeleng Lekotsi and Five Roses right here in The Loft. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, the Young Women in Business Network is on their way to be the first women's cooperative bank in South Africa that will focus on professionals, entrepreneurs and business people. Naturally, at the helm of such a dynamic financial institution is an exceptional woman in her own right, Ntabeleng Lekotsi, who is carving out a new future for investment models in South Africa. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you so much for inviting me. I mean, what an absolute honor to interview. What a genius idea. But I think the nature of your investment model makes the story so special. How did it start? I started the Young Women in Business Network in 2009, yeah. and we host uh, an annual event, which we say we expose the women to existing business opportunities. Sure. So in 2011, I was honored enough to host the former president of Mbeki, and where there we were saying, what is triple BE and what does it really mean? Yeah. And when I was doing research, I found out that stock falls make 44 billion in the country. And I was amazed. I was like, but this is something that our great grandparents have been doing for so many years. So yeah. what is it that we are doing in this generation? So that's how it was started. But what is a stock fall? So let's start from the beginning. What is a stock fall? A so stock fall is like a social thing that happens yeah. usually monthly. Your burial societies, people come together and then they contribute. Usually now yeah. in our country, they spend most of that money buying groceries. Come December time, today they spend 44 billion in a week buying groceries so that's what happens so usually it's women that come together monthly they help each other there's a funeral they help you there's a wedding they help you so it's just a, so a social thing yeah so you took the concept of a stock fell yes. and then expanded on that yes take me through that that model so this is how it you're works. a genius <laughs> so now we're saying Okay, so what are we doing as this generation, right? So yeah. with the Stockwell model, we're going holiday. And I was saying, but we can't be going on holiday. Come on, guys. And I was saying, in Triple BEE, there were seven elements at the time. And yeah. one of them is ownership, which means that white-owned entities are looking to transform. And when they're looking to transform, they're looking for black 
professionals and entrepreneurs or business people that will partner with them. So instead of us going on holiday, let us use the very same model and as a collective, then invest in them for transformation purposes. So that's how it was started. Uh, five years down the line, we and other investors have partners, have a shareholding in Namlock, which is a logistics and distribution and warehousing. So you saving a thousand rand every month for a period of a year, and that's how we did it. How is your bank essentially different to, I mean, you've, uh, I mean this is such a brilliant idea, yes. but how is this different to how other banks are currently running? So it's a cooperative bank, yeah. meaning that we all equal. So here there's no majority shareholder. It means that it's a democratic bank. We all get one voting right. Yeah. The beauty of it is that we all shareholders. So here we can't assist you if you're not a shareholder or yeah. if you're not an investor. And check this out. If we make a billion rand, of profits that comes to you as a shareholder. In this case, that's what makes us different. And there's something called common bond. What is it, yeah. what is it that brings us together, you yeah. know? So here is a trust element, it's a referral issue. It's, I know Dini, so I'm going, to, I'm going to refer her. So that's how it works. And this is not something new. This is international standards. It's yeah. been in existence for years and years, just that it's new in South Africa. And exactly. so it happens that I was brave enough to say, let us get into the financial sector. I mean, the financial, our South African financial sector is one of the best in the world, yeah. but we are nowhere in it. Exactly. So that's how I did it. Now, even though men are allowed to be part of your bank, I think at the moment it's 60% women, and yes. you, uh, you really only want a lot of women to join. Yes. But I think that's such a sensible thing, because in my opinion in that, women are a lot more intuitive, I suppose, when it comes to investments, yes. and it's got to mean something to them, where men take, I think, bolder risks not bolder but but they're a little bit more risky yes. so so tell me about your your upliftment of women in your bank you're so right because women are better payers than men yeah and that has been proven <laughs> and when we had our first agm i mean we had such a robust discussion yeah. about do we want it to be just black do we want it to be just 60 percent black women owned yeah. what is it that we want young women and business network it started by a woman so yeah. that's how we then decided, no, it's high time that women are given the opportunity to lead. Yeah. And in that, so then we said 60% as a South African uh, black uh, standards. Yeah. So that's how we came about it. But trust me, it was such a robust discussion. Yeah. Why do we want women to do it? Because yeah. we want women to lead. We want to be given the opportunity and the choice to do so. Because exactly. more than anything else, we are capable of exactly. doing exactly that. And women have been have proven themselves that to be better payers. You know, like you're saying, we are in tune. We run our households. Mm. Every finance decision goes to... It might be a situation that the husband is a breadwinner, but who makes the decisions in the household? is a woman. Exactly. I was actually delivering a talk to a, a, a bunch of women and they want, wanted me to, you know, to speak about things that I think are very important for women to start when they're very young. Mm -hmm. And I think investments, investing in your future and investing money, making very smart financial decisions when you're young will benefit you so much when you're younger. But investments can be very intimidating and very tricky. Mm -hmm. So what message would you say to young women? How do you recommend women start investing their money from a young age? My personal experience, uh, I mean, I was brought up in an entrepreneurial family. Mm. So for me, business has always been an alternative. So yeah. what happened is as young as I was, when I was given money, I went to boarding school. So when I was yeah. given money, I saved this money. And when I started working, you know, I didn't go out spending money like my friends did. I yeah. saved. I found myself, there's a power in saving. Yeah. There's power in knowing that I have money in my bank account and I don't have to use it. So when yeah. I go to the malls, I know I have money, so I'm not, I, I'm not forced, rather, you know, yeah. in saying I'm going to use this money. So for me, that's how my personal story is about when it comes to saving. Yeah. And luckily for me, my elder sister has always, she's always believed in saving. You know, she'd rather say, no, I'm not going to buy that. I'd rather yeah. have money in my bank account. And it's a psychological thing. It's a mindset thing. Mm. And what advice I would give to people is try saving and see the power that it gives you. Just yeah. knowing that I have extra money in my bank account that I don't have to use. Exactly. And for a rainy day, I can go back to it any time. 
and, and use my money. Yeah. I love that, you know, saving is a strong theme in, in, what, in what you're saying. But I think a lot of people do struggle to save nowadays, especially because of the unemployment rate. Also, co costs of living is expensive. Yes. So costs of living keep on going up and up and up, and salaries aren't really getting much higher. Yes. So how do you recommend people get out of that rut? Because I'm very against having credit. But a lot of people, you know, need credit cards. They need those accounts. How do you get out of that little washing machine of staying in debt and not being able to save? We don't need. We want. We want things. Yeah. We want the nice cars. We want to go to nice restaurants. We need yeah. to start cutting down on things that we don't need. You know, it's simple as saying, I want this shoe, but I can't afford it. Mm. But hey, I want to be seen. <laughs> it devastates <laughs> me if I can't afford, afford those pairs of shoes, but how are we going to do it? Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of uh, a total mindset. And this is where we start uh, educating people about the need and the want. Do I mm. really need it? No, I don't. Do I really need 100 pair of shoes? No. Can we, we really? <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, but you're quite right. So that's, that's where the difference is. I mean, mm. for myself, when I started in business, trust me, for the first two or three years, I didn't buy anything. And really? I had the courage to say to my friends when we went out, I'll be like, who's paying? Because for the first time, I didn't have money coming in. I was spending to make money. So yeah. it's just the, the matter of saying self-discipline. If we can get self-discipline right, we'll be able to get out of that. And yes, the economy is bad. Yes, our salaries are not going, are not increasing, they yeah. are decreasing. But it's a matter of knowing yourself and who you are. And if you invest in yourself and you spend more time and internalize what yeah. you need and what you want, you'll be able to get out of debt. Trust yeah. me, South Africans have the money. We do. It's just a matter of what we use our money exactly. for. You are so inspiring. And like, for me to speak to you, it really is inspiring because it is possible to do that. But you're also so brave to take that leap. And, and look, look what you've achieved. What do you still want to achieve? And what is your vision? Where do you want to see this going? Five years from now, mm -hmm. 100,000 shareholders, yeah. right? That would mean 1 billion rand of share capital. Yeah. That will mean 1.2 billion rand of yeah. savings a year. Yeah. This is us without loaning. This is us as South Africans coming together and yeah. saying we need an alternative. This is 100,000 shareholders, 1.2 Each time I think of those numbers, can you see YWBN Cooperative Bank brand everywhere? Yeah. And it's that. And with that, it's, it's uplifting. It's saying that we will then create jobs. And from banking, we can then move to insurance because then as a collective, you know, it's not yeah. just me. This is not Ntabeleng getting 90% like sure. shareholder. And then from that, we can move to other sectors where we are not represented. And yeah. that is the only way that as South Africans, we can create jobs. And it can't be done by one person. It's high time that people think that Mutsepe will do a difference. No. It's ordinary South Africans that as a collective, when we work together, we can achieve much more. And wow. I have no doubt that South Africans are ready for that. It yeah. proves that now. You are so inspiring and a perfect example of what a South African woman can do. Thank you so Thank much you for so. chatting to us. Really amazing work. Now, strong female entrepreneurs like Ntabeleng are shattering glass ceilings and leading a new generation of women into a brighter future. Five Roses salutes your continued efforts to excel and reshape South Africa's business landscape. Now, we are giving away a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing an assortment of their delicious teas. To stand a chance to win, simply SMS the keyword five roses and your name to 33650. SMSs are charged at 1 rand 50 each and T's and C's do apply. So visit our website afternoonexpress.co.za for details. Join us again this time next week when we will be chatting to yet another exceptional South African woman. And until then, remember that nobody makes better tea than you and five roses. Sure, I loved her comments about saving. One other way to save some money is to win loads and loads of competitions. And so today on Afternoon Express, we're going to be giving a really cool Weber uh, right here on the show with Woolies. What you guys had to do on our social account on Facebook was tell us how you use the Woolworths rotisserie chicken in the best recipe that you know how. And I got two really cool comments. One was from Nicole van Heerden, who says that she makes a really delicious Moroccan-inspired soup. The details on how she puts it together are on our Facebook page. And then one year from Lisa Ann Sticher. I hope that's how you pronounce your surname. 
She says, I shred, the I shred the chicken and mix it with red pepper pesto. I mix this with cooked fettuccine pasta and top with grated Parmesan cheese. A quick and easy meal for a weeknight or a lazy weekend. Today with Woolies. Absolutely amazing recipes that you guys are sending to us on our social accounts. Keep them coming through and you could be a winner of this amazing Weber Bry. Speaking of winning, time is running out to enter the Tropica Island of Treasure. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. No, we haven't been messing with your mind. I know it's five to six and we haven't made our second recipe just yet. So claiming myself, we're about to get started with something so delicious and hearty. This will keep you going for weeks. Honestly, sure. it will. Are you setting me like a time limit? You yes, I am. Go, limit? claim, go. We've go. got we to get this second recipe out before the end of the show. Cool. So what I've done is I've started sauteing my onions for the paella already and cool. a lot of olive oil. When it comes to Spanish food, olive oil is key. So then another Spanish ingredient. Chorizo. There we go. That which goes I'm in. Which I mistaken in my first few weeks on Afternoon Express. It is totally Italian. <laughs> Orcs. Not. Yeah. Well, to be fair, you've got an Italian version too, so True. it's okay. Yes, 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 so yes. what's going to happen is all those beautiful spices and oils are going to come out of the, the chorizo. Some thyme goes in there mm -hmm. again. Which we and don't have much of. And then we're keeping things extremely simple. Everything you've got at home. So garlic goes in. Delicious. You can do this really hot. Yummy. I'm going to turn that temperature down. So the idea, obviously, is to get all of the fragrances out of those out of those things. So when you add your rice, all of that flavor that's been cooked through those, those those different ingredients are going to really just soak into the rice that you're adding. Exactly. And by doing that, you don't have to worry about adding too many ingredients. You're kind of using yeah. everything almost like, well, at, the, at its most potential. Yeah. And something that I've learned recently about cooking, you're throwing in al borio rice in there. What? And not bomba rice, which you would normally use, just because we don't get bomba rice in this country. Very, okay, cool. You have to really be searching Import for it. Important, yeah. It. And so one thing I learned about different flavors is obviously if you want to add something salty, try and experiment with uh, flavors of food that are salty. So you've got your chorizo in there, which is adding a slight pepperiness and that saltiness to the dish itself without having to just go and throw salt and pepper in. Exactly. You know? um, so, so it is a nice way to just complement those dishes. Mm. I agree. So I know a lot of people at home probably cringing right now, like how are you using a borio rice for a pear? It's fine. What you want to focus on using a short grain rice, which yes. is quite starchy, and that's going to kind of help replicate that bomba rice which yes. is normally used. Bomba rice is honestly not much different. So those of you who <coughs> maybe are like worrying about this stuff, it isn't that much different to it's an alborio. It's not. So I'm using these amazing Sea Harvest King Clip fillets. Delicious. They are so meaty and mm. so flaky. I'm not even going to cut them up. I'm going to add them to the rice just like that. Yeah. So once I start soaking up all that flavor and start cooking through, they will automatically start to separate themselves. It the is. Different and you're going to kind of help it along the way. Yeah. You can kind of break it up a bit just to like get it to like distribute throughout yeah. the It's the like player. a psychologist. Helps you with your breakup. It's like you it act like a psychologist to the dish. You help with the breakup. Yeah. You wanna, you're trying to tell me something. Okay. <laughs> So beautifully toasted rice, you can yes. smell everything. Mm. I've got some amazing fresh fish stock. Cool. And that's just gonna go in. You can use chicken stock and with, with a seafood dish, because obviously we know everything tastes like chicken and chicken tastes like everything. Yes. So okay, it's a cool. good neutral stock. That's gonna go in there. And what's gonna happen is that's gonna cook for about 20 minutes. And unlike a risotto, you don't have to stand there stirring all day. Yep. That's gonna do its thing on its own. And I got one that I made for us earlier. Ta-da! So it I'm going to finish it off. Amazing. Your, the way that the tomatoes cook through there looks so delicious. Oh, yes. Oh, y y thanks, Dan. Tomatoes go in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Because I saw it in this dish and I was like, but wait, where's the tomato? I was actually thinking while I was saying, I was like, but wait, I see tomatoes there, not there. Okay, well done. Okay, tomatoes go in. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Dan. Don't leave me hanging now. Don't leave. Oh, there we go. That's hilarious. Okay. So a beautiful um, paella is done. The sprinkling of parsley goes on. That's that freshness that you want to add to all of those rich flavors, which is amazing. And because I always use lemon in the kitchen, that's going to just lift Oof, everything again. Delicious, nice zestiness thrown in there. And well done. Dish is done. Looks so delicious and took you not too long at all. It's one of the dishes you throw a whole bunch of delicious flavors into a pan and it cooks right through, and the out product is absolutely amazing. Don't forget, there's some spot prizes, ladies and gentlemen. There seems to be loads of winning on Afternoon Express today. Go to our Facebook page. You can find all the details on how you can win some cool prizes with Sea Harvest there. Then while you're on your phone or on your tablet or on your mobile device or your laptop for that uh, matter, go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. There you can find the recipe and the shopping list for uh, this incredible dish that you want to make at home. Make a delicious paella, impress your family and friends, and who knows, maybe you can invite me over for dinner and I'll taste it. Should we take it over? Let's go. Yummy. Now this is going to be, we've had shows where there have been recipes that everyone wants to try. These are two that you guys are going to have to fight over which one you're going to try first. <laughs> All of this. Yeah. Wow. A little bit of both. I think yeah. I've made enough for everyone. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very Thanks. much, Dan. Looks amazing. I would say that's a wrap, but that's a burrito, so it doesn't quite work uh, for this show. <coughs> <laughs> I should probably put food in my mouth just to shut up right now. Hey, isn't that what? <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your very yeah. inspiring stories. And what's up for the future? Um, you know what? I just go with the wind. I see where life takes me and then I just... 
when I get there, I perform. Mm. Just perform, always perform. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and for you? We've already hinted that there will be a school opening soon. Exactly. And uh, the expansion of our business into different other things, mm. yeah. exactly. other than handbags. Yeah. And the world. Oh, yeah. And everybody loves your bags so much. You've sold bags during the break, and Jeannie even bought a bag. <laughs> oh, Listen, it doesn't take much to sell me a handbag. To that. <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you guys for your support. Oh, it, it, really, it was a surprise for me. Thank you so much. No, please, they're Absolutely. amazing. Now, remember that we are off air tomorrow due to the cricket, but we're back on your screens again next week, Monday. So we'll be seeing you then. Thank you so much to everybody for being here. Thank you so much to watch, for watching, and we'll see you next week. Good night and happy eating. Bye. Ciao. Now let's happy eat. Yeah, you're going to have one. Tomorrow afternoon, Express will be off air due to the cricket, but we will be back on your screens on Monday, the 3rd of October. Another feel good